Coach, outside of Tillman, what other receivers have stepped up so far? Oh, man, that's that's been a long list, this camp. We've been fortunate. Jalen Hyatt uh, seems like a different guy uh, mentally. Physically, he's gained about 8 to 10 pounds. Uh, but the competitiveness that he showed last year, he's channeling, he's channeling it in a different direction. Uh, you see him respond the right way. You see him coach guys up when he's not in. He's really taking on um, that accountability role for himself and also the group. Uh, Squirrel White has been phenomenal. Uh, Chaz Nimrod has been um, a pleasant surprise. Um, along with the guys that are already here, Ramel Keaton had a good camp. He makes some really good plays today. Our biggest thing with him is to emphasize him being consistent, uh, not only on the underneath stuff, but cha uh, cha I'm sorry, challenging him down the field to make those plays consistently. Um, Jimmy Calloway has been another one that stood out this camp. Rob and then Vince. Coach, just after what we saw last year from Cedric and Bayless, two guys who have not done a lot prior, prior to 2021, would you describe this offense as being just that receiver friendly where you can plug guys in and they can become playmakers? I think it's absolutely that. And it's a uh, message to, you know, the younger guys in high school when you're looking for an offense to really be prolific in. Um, you know, you see Sed and Bayless and what they did before we got here. And you see what they did when we got here. And it's like something off a movie. Uh, and it's real. Um, you see us at practice every day, and it's a different guy every day who's able to get touches and show what they have. So I think this offense, if you're a receiver um, and you want to be productive, you want to get developed, uh, you want to be a guy, I think this offense for sure is a receiver-friendly offense, no doubt. Justin, two questions. One, who are some guys that maybe have been working in a slot that you also have confidence that you can bounce them to the outside as well? Uh, first one that comes to mind is, is Hyatt, um, just because he played significant snaps in the slot last year. You know, a lot of times when you have guys playing multiple positions, you want them to master one. Uh, once they master that, then you can start to dive into other things. Um, a couple other guys we can get to later on um, once they master the slot, but high is the first that comes to mind. We could definitely do that. With Squirrel White's size, uh, obviously guys are going to want to try to get their hands on him, be physical with him. What, what is his counter to that for him to still be successful and utilize that speed? Don't process? get touched. Now, obviously, sometimes you got to be ready to play with your hands, but a guy like that, you want to play in your wheelhouse. Squirrel's not, you know, the world's strongest man. He probably never will be. He knows that. He could definitely be the world's fastest man. Uh, so you play within your wheelhouse. Uh, and that'd be different from a guy like Seth Tillman, right? His strength is his physicality. Then you want to embrace it and play into that, no doubt. Austin and Patrick, you, you talk about the message to high school kids. Do you think that a year where basically backing up last year where Said went from little production the year before to a massive year over 1,000 yards. Same thing with Bayless. Doing that with two new guys this year, along with said, just backs that message up to those high school kids. You know, I, mean, I know the offense has had success Central Florida, <coughs> Tennessee, but to do it back to back years with different guys here, do you think that helps the message for you? Absolutely. It just it, it continues to help us create our brand. That's it. Uh, our brand as an offense, obviously, is a tempo. Uh, we're high powered. Um, it's receiver friendly. Receivers from any you know form of life, any shape, size can come in this offense and be successful. Um, and I think to your point, the more you do that, the more you have prolific receivers, the more it just adds to your brand. It's no different than what you know our head coach does. He's always got a quarterback, no matter where he is. He's done that consistently. His brand has been that you know because of his history, um, and I think that's what we're trying to do at the wideout position. Coach, what, what kind of camp has Bruce McCoy had? And Brew has been a pleasant surprise. He's been really good. For a guy who hadn't played in a season, uh, he's obviously had to build stamina back up. Um, but when you talk about just a physical specimen and some things like you can coach, some things you can't, that guy's got a lot of things that you just can't coach. Uh, and for him, it's just honing in on the details, getting him polished up, uh, him really to become a technician. Uh, he's a big athlete. He's physical. He's twitchy, can run. Uh, for us, it's just being able to get him, get his stamina up, get him back in shape, um, and then polish up the little things with him. How, how long does it take a wide receiver to, to learn and, and figure out how to play in this offense when you guys go so fast and do all those things? It varies. It depends on what kind of learner you are. Some guys are visual. Some guys are kinesthetic. Some guys can get on the board, you know, and write. Um, I think for Brew, he's a kinesthetic guy. He's not a rep guy at all, but he's a kinesthetic learner. 
walking through in our walkthroughs in the afternoon, um, when he's not in the game, when he's watching the guy that's in, taking mental reps on the side, walking through reps, all, all those things are extremely important for him, uh, especially since his stamina, we got to catch up. He's got to take advantage of the reps where he's not physically going. Kelsey, with Jalen talking about him just being a different player, how is that translated onto the field, and how do you make sure that those things translate into the season as well? Absolutely. That's the biggest thing is you have to make sure they translate during the season. So for me, for Jalen, even before I got promoted, when I was a still, still a QC last year, uh, anytime I'm talking to him, pass him in the hallway, just reminding him about putting those things on tape. Because uh, that's ultimately what you want. If we have 10 good practices well, by a guy, and then on Saturday he doesn't show up, like – you don't like their result. So just staying on him, not giving him any leeway. Sometimes that gets annoying. Like sometimes he's tired of hearing me talk. He gets annoying. Uh, he gets annoyed seeing my face. Uh, but you've got to stay on him until he proves that he's able to carry that on his own with his, his own individual habits. What, what did you talk about that translate when he starts doing it on Saturday? So up until then, we stay on him. Up until then, we stay on him. Absolutely. Yeah, Kelsey, two things. One, do you lock the guy into a spot, or do you cross train? Meaning, there's young guys who are going to learn slot and outside. How do you handle that with freshmen? And, and two, how do you, how consistent has this group been? Are you pleased with their consistency in terms of catching the ball and everything to this point through camp? Absolutely. So the way we train them is, anytime we're installing anything, it's full concepts. Guys have to know the full concept. So even if you're just playing the outside receiver, you should know what the slot's doing because your job dictates him. So everybody's learning full concepts. Now, when we're on the grass, you're learning one position initially, right? And then, like we spoke about earlier, as I master that, then we can move you inside. But as far as learning, everybody's learning full, full concepts. Just in the heat of the moment, I'm playing one position, and as I master that, then I can start to play multiple positions. Uh, and the consistency piece, I think that was the biggest thing today, right? This, we're past the halfway point in camp. Uh, guys' bodies are starting to get tired, so it beco becomes more of a mental game. I um, mean, to me, in order to be consistent, it's all details and all execution, right? The first couple days, really the first week, everybody's jacked up off Mountain Dew and fired up and ready to go. Uh, and then now, when your body's tired, like this really separates the elite from the average guys. Uh, so the detail, the execution, like those are the things that's going to help you be consistent. Uh, Coach Hype talks about competitive composure. In order to be competitive when you're tired, you got to stay composed when the bullets are flying, and that detail piece has to be incorporated. You have to apply it. Uh, and that's what allows us to be consistent over the last couple of days. Um, scrimmage showed that we had some plays that we left on the field during the scrimmage, uh, but for the most part, I felt like we were really consistent with our tempo, with our operation. Uh, so it was a solid day. Kellyanne in the back. Hey, Coach, a couple of things. One, how is Walker Barrow performing in this camp? And two, how is that competition on the outside? I know you mentioned a plethora of receivers before, but is there anybody specifically standing out there? Yeah, Walk's one. Um, Walk has had a really good camp. Um, for him, last spring, he had a knee injury that he kind of had to work through. So camp, he was kind of just working back. Uh, he's been really good because Walker plays harder than anybody on the field. So he's always going to give himself a chance to be successful. Um, as far as the competition piece, I think we've done a good job of placing guys in different spots, placing guys with the ones, with the tools here to create competition in the room. Um, really, a lot of times with these guys, competition is the best influence. When you see a guy behind you, like Squirrel White, like Chaz Nimrod, like Caleb Webb, ready to, to, to do anything they can to get on the field, naturally, you're going to get a little bit more sense, sense of urgency when it's time for you to play, put a bit, little bit more pressure on you to make those plays. And I think that is what creates competition. Guys behind you being urgent and pushing you every day. Patrick and Vince. There's a couple things. Uh, Coach Golish talking to us before camp started said that Jimmy Cowley has been super inconsistent pretty much since you guys got here. So have you seen more consistency from him? Yeah, he, he's been better. <clears throat> Jimmy's a guy that he, he's got to have a routine, right? When, when he gets out of a routine, he can kind of, you know, become inconsistent. Uh, he's definitely been better. Um, but I think, honestly, our environment has created that. Our head guy does a great job of creating an environment where guys can be successful. So you need guys to be positive. You need guys to be energetic. And usually when you're in those type of environments, you're going to be the best, best version of yourself. Excuse me. Uh, and Coach Hype does a great job of creating an environment where guys can be successful. Uh, so not a lot of long faces, not a lot of bad body language. He does a good job of creating environments. And guys like Jimmy can become the best versions of themselves.
three starters. Do you envision being able to play more guys to at least start the season and see kind of how things shake out, or, or are you still waiting to see on, on some guys that, that can show that they've earned a chance to play? Yeah, we're going to play the, the guys that are ready to play. If we got two guys ready to play, we'll play 12 personnel, we'll play two receivers. If we got 10 that can play, we'll roll in platoons. Uh, but I'm not a big believer in just throwing guys out there that don't know what they're doing, right? Like, the guys that can play who've proved that, who've been consistent and showed that they're competitive enough to do that uh, snap in and snap out, like, those are the guys going to play. Whether it's two or 20, whoever's ready to play is going to be on the field. Gus, in the spring, uh, another recruiting aspect of it was a little bit of a transition for you to catch up a little bit. You're a relationship guy, so Coach Eichel mentioned that he thought that would be natural for you. Can you kind of take us through what that experience has been like for you now going through uh, a cycle being a recruiter for the University of Tennessee? Yeah, I think early on is definitely a transition, but right, transitions, they always have an ending point. Um, and that's back to the environment, right? That depends a lot on your environment. If you're in an environment where you're expected to recruit and it's set aside daily for the recruit, that transition is going to be a lot shorter than if you're on your own and nobody else is, is setting that expectation. So uh, for that transition was seamless because Coach Hype has things in our, our daily schedule that is pertaining directly to recruiting and recruiting only. Um, so you build habits naturally and you're able to be successful when transitioning in situations like that. See, for, for guys like Hyatt and, and Merrill, I guess especially, uh, last season it, it seemed like early in the year those were going to be guys who were a big part of the offense. And, and then after a few games, the rotation kind of changes and, and they don't play as much the rest of the year. How tough can that be for a young player to kind of go through? And what do you learn about a player when they handle something like that? Absolutely. Um, I think, man, I think this game is really indicative of the way you live your life, right? Like there will be a bunch of times where – you're bummed out or you're not satisfied or, you know, something hurts your feelings. Like the way you respond to this game, and we tell our guys that all the time, that'll be the way you respond to life when you're 40, 50 years old and you come home and, you know, your kid's suspended. Like you can't put your head down and mope around the house all day, right? So uh, a really cool story, Valus didn't play the first couple of games last season. He had that exact situation. Um, and what that kid decided to do was to respond the right way. I had that exact conversation with him, and it changed the tra trajectory of his season and probably will change the trajectory of his life. Um, he's in position he always wanted to be in. He's got the bull by the horns right now. Um, and it's simply because of the way he responded in a time that he was, uh, you know, he had unfortunate circumstances. He was down, responding the right way, uh, and, and now he is where he is. And so the cool thing about that is, Jalen Hyatt saw that firsthand, and I'm sure that's got some sense of why he's urgent and, and mentally in a different space. Cedric Tillman saw that firsthand. Uh, I saw it firsthand. Like, it helped me uh, personally in my own journey. Um, but when you have examples like that that are alive and you're able to live through, it changes you forever when you see those guys respond the right way. So the same way they respond in life, do it on the field, and it becomes habit. Thank you, guys.